This just in, breaking news. Our top story tonight, Tony G banned from Russia. Diplomats say we're not putting up with it anymore. Online poker takes a bad beat in Australia as parliament outlaws it. And finally tonight, Dios mio, train wreck in Panama as players threaten to boycott poker stars over mismanaged events. All of this and more tonight on Doug Polk's show about things currently happening in card gambling. Let's kick off our show tonight talking about Tony G getting banned from Russia. Now, if you're not familiar with Tony G, he's known for being a little bit brass at the table and sometimes saying things that maybe he shouldn't say. Also, he's definitely qualified. I think we should retire. I think it's over. Yeah, baby! Come on, Russian, get out! I think it's bike time. You come to my game and you're wasting my time. Bring the Russians on. Bring more Russians on. Now, why would Russia want to ban this Lithuanian poker superstar from being able to enter the country? Tony G tweeted out his own thoughts on the matter, saying, That's the price of being active in hashtag politics and expressing open opinions about the real threats to your country. While Tony G does seem to think that expressing his opinions played a role, he also went on to mention that he thinks it may partly be because he trolled a Russian diplomat during a hearing in the European Parliament. I guess that, that makes us different in the EU because we, we welcome everybody. We're, as Russia has banned a lot of our MEPs from coming in, and Patos Ostravages, who was here, has actually banned to even go and speak at any conferences in Russia. So that is the fundamental difference in our rights. On a, on a nuclear power plant, yes, it was a, an old Russian technology power plant that was not safe. And with the help of our partners from the European Union, we managed to close it down. The song from Lithuania was actually from the 2000 Olympic Games on basketball, where Lithuania won the bronze medal in basketball, being a country of three million people. So thank you very much for noting that. Being clean as well in the way we compete. <laughs> At the end of the day, trolling is not funny in the European Parliament, and it's certainly not funny on the internet. I fucking beast high stakes, I beast everything. Australian online poker has finally bit the dust. Now, it is important for us to take a step back and realize this is like their Black Friday. Think about all of the things that we associate with Black Friday, they're going through that right now. Now, I can't say I didn't see this coming. Australia had this on the horizon for a long period of time, and this was a bill that tried to get passed in order to make an exception for poker and, I believe, blackjack. Ultimately, the Senate voted 46 to 6 to not allow online poker in Australia, and that's pretty much GG. It's in trying times like these that we look to our elected officials for leadership and guidance. Let's see what Senator David Leyenhelm has to say. I'm talking to the government about reconsidering the legislation, but if they go ahead, I will put forward amendments to make an exception for online poker and blackjack. In the meantime, it might be worth contacting Minister Alan Tudge and politely reminding him that you play online poker and you vote. And if none of this works, screw the government. Get yourself a VPN and an offshore account and carry on as you were. And that's exactly right. Sometimes you have to just accept, wait, what? Screw the government. Get yourself a VPN and an offshore account. You know what's a great quote from a senator? Screw the government. Screw the government. But what gets me even more than that is this is the face of VPNing in Australia. I'm pretty surprised he even knows what a VPN is and he knows about offshore accounts. I'm on to you, David. I'm on to you. Now, it's no surprise that Poker Stars has had a tough run of things over the last year or two. But they have a new chapter in this ongoing saga when Bryn Kenny took to Facebook. Bryn says, and I quote, So of course nobody is happy with anything Poker Stars is doing. Not only do they cut all costs now and give nothing to the players, but they don't even honor their agreements. They have said that in the 10K plus tournaments, it will only pay 15% of the field, and a small 10K a day, they show a payout that averages 20%. I think they think everyone is stupid, 
But what they don't understand with their high rake and terrible service is that soon they won't have an event at all outside of Barcelona. It goes on to finish up by saying, if you agree with me here, play Florida instead of Macau to show them they can't do whatever they want and have people still showing up. I won't be going for sure. Many other notable poker players also chimed in, including Chris Hunnichen, who said, Igor Kurganov is a pro now. It's time he stands up for everyone and makes it known that they need to make changes to help the players. I'm sorry, Chris, but I'm just not buying it. There were a few bigger names that decided to leave Poker Stars when they made some of these changes, like Isaac Haxton and Alex Miller, and I respect that. And there were a lot of players that decided to stay with Poker Stars, and while it probably wasn't the right thing to do, I can understand where they're coming from. For many of them, it was a major source of income. But Igor Kurganov jumped on the boat in 2017. If you're getting in that boat, you know that there's going to be a little bit of more rake is better, and a lot of Cristiano Ronaldo. Paul Newey also commented saying, I am certainly planning on less Poker Stars trips and more on other tours. Panama has been absolutely awful in every way except the local staff have been friendly and tried their best. Poor turnouts, terrible hotel, 5.5% tax at cage, uncapped rake on cash games, worst lifts in the world, crap Wi-Fi, crap food, most hotel staff can't speak a word of English, power cuts, and I had to pay almost $500 a night just to get a room with a bathtub. If anyone would be upset that they didn't have a bathtub, it would be Paul Newey, who tweeted this during the $1 million one drop in 2014, and my God, I'm glad it's a bubble bath. Look, Stars has had a bad run since they removed the SNE bonuses for the next year that they promised that players would have. And yeah, they've raised rake across the board. Additionally, they removed rake back at the highest stakes, which wasn't exactly great, but wasn't the biggest deal either. Maybe rake went up a little bit, a few times, and then another couple times. Oh yeah, and then they ripped off their affiliates. And sure, they got rid of heads up tables, which for some players were one of their favorite game types. And maybe the stars coin transition from FEPs cost people some millions. These are things you can work around. And yeah, their CEO got investigated for insider trading, but whose hasn't? But you know what? Despite all of these things, at the end of the day, we're moving into our next section, a new segment here on our new show called The River. In case you missed it, Kate Hall defeated Mike Dentali in a heads up grudge match on Poker Night in America. If you want to check out interviews with both players, we have them right here on the channel. Speaking of free money, Hashtag King has agreed to play me this fall on Live at the Bike. Who's that, you ask? Great question. In other news, all this week on Twitch, Streamboat has officially set sail. Now the guys are pictured here, and I know what you're thinking. Damn, that's a full house. Also on Twitch, today at 2 p.m. Pacific time, we are back with the Bankroll Challenge. We've been making some strides lately, and at our current rate, we're expected to finish by mid-September. Next up, Valentin Vorniku wins ninth World Series of Poker Circuit Ring. He topped a field of 169 entrants, and wait, what is this shirt? I mean, it has cards on it. That's embarrassing just to be wearing that. At that point, might as well throw some chips in too. I mean, yeah, we get it, you like poker. Let's calm down a little bit. And finally, the Commerce Casino has decided to try out a brand new event that will not allow hoodies, cell phones, headphones, or sunglasses. Now, you know what? I actually think this is a good thing for poker. Nothing's worse for a new player than to sit down at the table and see eight hoodie-wearing, sunglasses-on, headphones-blaring people on their cell phones and think, man, this is going to be a fun tournament. The thing is that atmosphere is bad for the game. We want to make it something that helps new players want to get involved in the game rather than try and make it the most comfortable setting for the people that already played it. I get that poker is declining online, but it's also growing in some live areas that aren't Panama for poker stars. I think as a community, we should try to get people into the game of poker and make it a more rewarding experience for everyone involved. Taking away these things does it, and I'm interested, interested to see how this social experiment that they're calling it is going to go. That's it for me, everyone. Thank you for stopping by for the news.
Also, as a reminder, make sure to hit that sub button on your way out the door so you don't miss new videos that come out.